paper this morning is Structural Heterogeneity in the Microporous Carbons by Brian McEnany, Timothy J. Mays, and Peter D. Kauston. The School of Material Sciences is at the University of Bath. Paper will be given by Brian McEnany. Thank you very much, uh, Bob. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, acknowledge the uh, kind of invitation from the organizers of this symposium for me to attend this meeting and present this paper. But secondly, I'd like to ac acknowledge the contribution of my co-authors, Peter Corston, who prepared the carbons and measured the absorption isotherms, and Tim Mays, who did all the computing. Now, the subject of this paper is in uh, sharp contrast to the, the, the previous one in that we're dealing with uh, highly disordered materials as opposed to uh, graphite-based materials, which are relatively well-ordered. Um, this can be illustrated in the first two slides. The first one here shows a high-resolution electron micrograph of uh, an activated carbon, uh, where the uh, layer planes are resolved here. These are the spacings here that you can see. And, and, and you can get an impression of this mic from this micrograph of a, of a disordered structure. And various models have been proposed for this type of structure, of which uh, the next slide is an example. It up a bit. Yeah. This is due to Jenkins and Kawamura. Essentially, what you have in a, in a subsequent work has refined this model, but essentially what you have in a carbon is uh, a tangled network of carbon layer planes, which are highly defective and with hetero elements uh, incorporated in the structure, probably on the periphery of the layer planes. Here and there, there are small uh, near parallel stacks, probably not as extensive as indicated in this, uh, in this thing, uh, but the, uh, the stacks are maybe only two or three layers high, and also variable interlayer spacing. And it's the interlayer spacing between these disordered carbon layer planes which f form the micropores in these materials. Um, This is a, a, a sort of simple sketch of the uh, sort of micropolar space you get in that type of model where the S's and the U's refer to the subclassification of micropolar, which I'm not dealing with uh, today. Well, such a structure is um, highly disordered, as you can see, and uh, it's appropriate to uh, to consider the extent to which the heterogeneity of this absorbent um, influences the uh, absorption process. And therefore, what we have been doing, uh, and we're not the only one, is to look at the generalized absorption isotherm, generalized absorption isotherm, uh, in its usual form. The usual form is the homotatic patch approximation. in which you assume that the surface consists of patches or sites of uniform absorption energy which fill according to a local isotherm, theta p of q. Uh, this leads to the generalized absorption isotherm, GAI for short, where the overall isotherm uh, is obtained by an integration over the range of q of the local isotherm multiplied by a site energy distribution function. Now, the well, various approaches to the solution of the generalized absorption isotherm are fairly well developed now. Um, I believe that the application of this equation to microporous carbons has not been fully explored, particularly uh, the influence of systematic changes in the structure of carbon, such as activation or heat treatment, and the influence of this on the isotherm have not been explored. But to define the objectives of this particular piece of work more closely, we need first to consider solutions to this isotherm. There are four types. Um, the first and most obvious one is direct integration, where you assume a function for the local isotherm. 
and a function for the site energy distribution function, which allows an integration to give you an analytical solution. Uh, that's a method we're using in this work. The, uh, the other approach is integral transforms, where you assume a function for the overall isotherm and the local isotherm, and invert the GAI by the method of integral transforms. We're not using that technique in this work. The third method is the condensation approximation, where you um, assume that the local isotherm is a step function. More accurately, you find a step function which approximates to an assumed function for the local isotherm. Uh, with the condensation approximation, it's a simple matter to differentiate the overall isotherm to give you a site energy distribution function. And finally, there are various numerical techniques for solving the equation. And the one that we're using in this work is, is regularization. This slide gives us the particular solutions that we've uh, approached in this work. Um, for each solution, we've assumed that the local isotherm is the Langmuir equation. Um, the method of direct integration we've used is that uh, proposed by Circa recently in the Journal of Core in Interface Science, where f of q was assumed to be a gamma type function. Um, the condensation approximation, we've assumed that the overall isotherm follows the dubunin radoskovich equation. Uh, we know that it does from tests of the, of the Dubinin equation. Um, this particular method is uh, described by Carofolini. And then the numerical technique we've used is, is regularization, which I'll, I'll describe in a minute. Uh, to, uh, I've given acronyms to uh, each of these techniques in what follows. This technique I've called LGAM for Langmuir Gamma. This is a, an acronym proposed by Sir Garland Myers a few years ago. This one I've called CADR, Condensation Approximation Dubinin Radoskovich. And this we call LREG, Langmuir Equation Regularization. Now, the, the slides I prepared for the uh, a little detail on these techniques. So, still project very well, so I'll have to move over here. Can we have the double for more, please? Uh, the integration of the um, overall isotherm to give us the, uh, using the LGAM approximation, the gamma type function, gives this uh, rather fearsome looking expression where alpha is, the, is a parameter of the equation and e to the n plus 1 is the n plus 1 order exponential integral of alpha over p, and the n is an integer which can take uh, those values. Now in our work, and indeed in a lot of the work published by Sirkar, it turns out for our carbon that n is zero, uh, which indicates that it's an heterogeneous absorbent. And in that case, uh, the distribution function is given by an equally uh, fearsome looking expression with bristling with exponentials, uh, this time of the function alpha over p sub l, where p sub l is the reciprocal of the pre exponent in the Langmuir constant b. We call it the Langmuir pressure uh, in this work. For the condensation approximation, the dubinin radoskovich equation can be written in this form, where d is the dr constant. Uh, the differentiation of this equation gives us uh, and, uh, some transformations gives us a site energy distribution function, which is essentially a skewed Gaussian type of function, uh, where Q sub A uh, is RT over D, and it's in fact equal to beta E sub zero, where beta is the infinity coefficient of the Dubinin Radoskovich approach, and E sub zero is the characteristic energy. And Q sub D is the lower bound of the range of values of Q, given by RT P sub L over P sub zero, where P sub zero is the um, SVP. Uh, a word about the principles of regularization. Um, in numerical methods, uh, as, as, as you will know, uh, for this sort of problem, you would replace the generalized absorption isotherm by a numerical integration formula for the overall isotherm. And then you would form the residual sum of squares, uh, where this is the, the data and this is the function for our model, and we try to minimize R. Um, the trouble with this, when you apply it to an equation of the type of the generalized absorption isotherm, is that it produces wild instabilities uh, in, um, in the solution. And to overcome this problem, the method of regularization proposes that you add a smoothness term to the minimization procedure. What in effect this means is 
you assume, you add a further constraint to the numerical procedure, you assume that your distribution function is smooth in, in some way. And the, you then, uh, instead of minimizing simply r, you minimize another function i, which is uh, the sum of the sum of squares, and the smoothness fun function um, multiplied by a parameter, an adjustable parameter, alpha. And essentially what you do is you adjust alpha to give you a compromise between smoothness of fit and uh, smoothness of the function and goodness of fit to the data. I can go into that in, in detail afterwards if anyone's interested. Well, having um, outlined the techniques, I can now go on and um, list our objectives a little bit more precisely. It's always a mistake to make slides and overheads. <laughs> So our, our objectives in this particular way were, were, were to compare solutions to the generalized adsorption isotherm for a moderately activated and a highly activated microporous carbon. Uh, we know uh, from other techniques that this develops the porosity, microporosity, <coughs> substantially. But we were interested to see uh, what effect uh, this had on the distribution functions we obtained. Another objective was to compare the solution we obtained uh, using a constrained, a more constrained uh, distribution function, LGAM, because here we assume that the distribution function is a gamma type. Uh, we to, want to compare this with a solution having a less constrained F of Q, the regularization uh, approach, which I've just outlined. And, and thirdly, we were, wanted to assess the validity of the jubina radiskovich equation via the condensation approximation. Um, in a, se in a sense, the, um, it, it's often said that the Jubin and Radeskovich equation is uh, empirical in nature, and indeed, when it was originally proposed, so it was. Uh, but I think uh, the work that's been done on the generalized absorption isotherm uh, shows that the Jubin and Radeskovich equation can be regarded as an approximate solution to the generalized absorption isotherm, which follows if you assume that the local isotherm is a step function and the side energy distribution function is of the form that I outlined on the projectile. Oh, one minute. A briefing on experimental, the material we used was a PVDC carbon. It's actually, a, the precursor was a copolymer, a polyvinylene chloride and acrylonitrile. It, gave, it gives a carbon which is uh, dominantly microporous, carbonized to a thousand and activated in steam hydrogen the argon carrier, uh, and the particular carbons I'll present results for, those activated at 28% burn off and 80% burn off. We've measured the absorption of argon at 77K over a wide relative pressure range uh, from 005 to 150 torr. The next slide simply shows the form of the isotherms for the two carbons. I put this in to illustrate the strongly microporous nature of the isotherms, as indicated here to draw attention to the um, uh, adsorptive capacity of the 80% carbon is more than twice that of the 28% carbon. The other point to make is that, of course, this is simply an isotherm of the top end of the pressure range. The bulk of the data we use is actually compressed down here. This is nitrogen absorption? Argon absorption. There's 77 pages on the previous slide. Okay, first result. Uh, I'm presenting the results in two ways. The first one compares the three techniques uh, on a single carbon. This is a 28% burn off carbon. And this is the distribution function. Here is F of Q plotted against uh, Q. Now, we can make a number of points uh, about this. First of all, the uh, gamma type function, the L gamma equation, gives a, a tighter distribution than the uh, regularization approach. We find this for, for all of the carbons, that the gamma function <coughs> is a more constrained, if you like, distribution function than regularization. Um, second thing to say is that the regularization distribution and the condensation approximation of Jubin and Radeskovich uh, 
distributions are similar to each other. The, the range of the CADR is, is slightly wider than that of the uh, regularization approach, the LREG, uh, which is what you would expect, but it is a more approximate solution than the regularization approach. The next thing to show is the, um, here I, I simply compare the uh, LREG distributions for the low and the high burn-off chars. Um, and here, this was something of a surprise to us because the, the distribution functions for the two carbons are, are quite similar to each other. It is true that the range of Q for the higher burn-off carbon is um, wider than for the lower burn-off carbon, um, but uh, the difference is not very great. Uh, the other thing to note here is in both carbons there's a, there's a hint of bimodality or polymodality, but we wouldn't, um, we're not convinced that isn't an artifact of the technique. Uh, more work is needed on that. Um, but in general, despite the twofold, more than twofold increase in adsorptive capacity, the distribution functions for the two carbons are, are very similar. This suggests that it's, for these carbons at least, it's relatively insensitive to, um, the distribution function is relatively insensitive to the extent of burn-up. Um, it could be this because the carbons are very microporous, as indicated by the, the uh, isotherms. Uh, but further work is needed looking at uh, other activated series where we can develop the mesoporosity to a greater extent. A final point before I move to the conclusions is, um, is this. Uh, for each of the methods we used, we um, looked at the residuals as a function of pressure. The residuals being the difference between the experimental data and the model data. And for each of the um, methods we used, we got a systematic change in the residuals with, uh, with pressure of this sort of form, being positive at low pressures and negative at high pressures. Now, this suggests to us um, some inadequacy in the modeling procedure, which is common to the three methods. And the thing that's common to the three methods is the Langmuir local isotherm. So we believe that this uh, this is evidence that perhaps the Langmuir local isotherm is not um, as good a local isotherm as you could choose for uh, modeling this type of absorption. And we plan to look at uh, other iso local isotherms uh, in future work. Moving now to uh, conclusions, um, we find that the uh, gamma type distribution function L gamma gives a tight distribution, a tight distribution of F of Q. Uh, the Regularization approach and the Dubin and Rudeskovich condensation approximation give similar distributions, but the Dubin and Rudeskovich is slightly wider as expected. The Dubin and Rudeskovich condensation approximation is a good approximation, we think, for R77K on these carbons. Um, I should say that the condensation approximation is essentially a low temperature approximation. It becomes an exact solution of the uh, generalized absorption isotherm at 0K. So this may not be true at higher temperatures, and it may not be true for other carbons, if you don't know. Um, the other thing to say is that F of Q does not change much with burn-off for these carbons. And the point I didn't make before, the sensitivity of F of Q, the effects of burn-off, is greatest for the regularization, which we think is the least constrained of our solutions, and least for the gamma type of approximation, which we think is the most constrained. Thank you very much. Well, of course, the, I mean, the distribution function uh, tells you, gives you information, uh, as you say, on, on the energetic distribution yes. of, the, of the adsorbent, and, and, and this, well, it, it's an amalgam of the energy distribution function, which is a function of adsorbate adsorbent interaction yes. and, and structural, uh, the, the structural heterogeneity. Uh, I think to, to move towards um, uh, trying to separate the uh, 
contribution due to adsorbate adsorbent interactions and the structural term, it would be necessary to compare results obtained using different adsorbates or adsorptives so that that, that, that contribution can be somehow sorted out. But that's something we, plan, we, we hope to do but haven't done yet. Your uh, different distributions look quite different. What, what it means very different? Do you know the distribution very different? Um, well, the, uh, the, well, I have the figures here. The, you can only really quote a mean for the, uh, uh, the L-gam, uh, the gamma type function, and for the um, CADR, uh, the L-reg, um, since it isn't of a particular analytical form, you, you could quote a mean, but it wouldn't be, um, I don't think it would be all that significant. Um, I, have the, I, have the figures I have the figures over there. We could, we could look at them. They look similar to this. The point I'm trying to make here is from all the experience we found that it's a mean which is key. Detailed structure of the distribution is not that important. It's that the patient is not that important. They can have for inferior to it. It's a difference in the patient. But if you have means, you end up with the same. Well, um, obviously, uh, if, if you're dealing with a particular adsorbate-adsorbent system at a particular temperature, uh, this type of approach is likely to give you similar mean values. Um, I mean, this seems obvious to me, since you, you could replace these distribution functions by some single energy parameter, like the characteristic energy of the dubinin radiskovich equation, which obviously falls within those ranges I, I reported. So it, it, it's... No surprise to me that the means are similar, but um, I don't see the justification for your statement that the, uh, if the means are similar, the form of the distribution is unimportant. I mean, can, can you elaborate on that? Well, that's what we found. Okay. Yeah, well, you mentioned the dubinin um, equation. Yes. And uh, as a sort of aside, you said that the P0 value was the saturated vapor pressure. Now, when you read the original papers by Polanyi, you'll find that Polanyi was in fact using P0 as a standard state and uh, at one atmosphere. And uh, it seems to me that a lot of the work has gone astray because we're using it as the saturated vapor pressure instead of as the standard state. And seeing we're collecting all the data at such low pressure, it would seem to be more appropriate to choose a standard state at a very much lower pressure so that we are in fact collecting the data with a standard state which is referred to the very low pressures in which we're collecting our information. Have you any comments on this because it would alter those calculations? Um, I, 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 my recollection of the Polanyi theory, I would put it a different way. Uh, I, I would say that the um, <coughs> The energy term in the Polanyi theory uh, is taken to represent the reversible work of adsorption uh, from the pressure P in the, um, in the free gas condition to some pressure, let's call it P prime, in the absorbed state. And the assumption that's made for um, adsorbate adsorbent systems where the adsorbate is well below its critical temperature is that the adsorbed state is um, liquid-like and therefore the reversible work of absorption can be approximated by RT log P or the P naught, and that's the, that's the justification for it in this particular work. Just two more questions. Yes. Uh, you made that sort of experiments in 77K. Right. You saw that the, the carbon is solid and is that Yes. Don't you think that it produces uh, difficulties for the evaluation of the Data. Um, you, you just told that you assume liquid like structure that's right, the yeah. of and uh, the solid absorption can produce dramatic effects. Yes, you, you uh, um, of course, the one must be careful in. Well, first of all, you are right. There's, there's, with any adsorbate you choose, there are, there are difficulties in defining the conditions in the absorbed state. And one of the problems with argon is 77K is that uh, in the bulk state it's a solid, but it's well known that the um, uh, solid, uh, the, the melting point and 
a boiling point, if you like, in, in, in the adsorbed state is not necessarily the same as uh, in the bulk state. So I, don't, I, I think it's facile to uh, say, because the melting point, uh, the adsorption temperature is below the bulk melting point, it, automatic, it automatically follows that the adsorbate uh, is in the solid state in the, in the adsorbent, because to a completely different force field in the adsorbent than it is in the bulk condition. So the plain fact is you don't know what condition it's in in the adsorbed state. You've got to make assumptions, and we assumed it was liquid-like. I have a very good question. One of the only two questions that's came up before. As long as you're dealing with that type of heat, you can actually take type 2. Type 1. As as, yeah, type 1. As long as it's horizontal, up in those high pressures, doesn't make it difficult to use for reference pressure. Uh, yeah. That we're talking about here. There's very little difference between what you can do in the door and it's yeah. 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 the other question I'd like to approach yeah. to you is we're here to determine this distribution function. I have often suspicions when we put a smoothing function on the distribution function, or we're trying to get data out of the distribution function. Yeah, well, the. And you'll lose fine structure in the distribution function by smoothing. Yes, but as I try to explain, if you, if you don't put a. a um, if you try a, a standard um, numerical method of analysis for, the, uh, for this problem with, with equations of the type of the. Um, generalized absorption isotherm, which are Fredholm type equations, then you get uh, instabilities in your um, distribution function. This is well recognized in the literature of um, the treatment of a generalized absorption isotherm. And it's, it's necessary, I agree it's, a const it's an assumed constraint, but it's an assumed constraint which is necessary if you're going to get any sort of solution out by, by the numerical approach. Thank you very much. So let me just ask one question. Yes. I have the privilege of asking a question again. Um, but when you have a distribution function which runs from 4 kilojoules to 16 kilojoules, yes. one can almost understand the 4 as a reasonable lower limit. Yeah. But what, what is a 16 kilojoule site like? I, w I wish you hadn't ex exercised your privilege. <laughs> In fact, the, I, I, I can comment. I, I, I comment. I can comment on that. I think that the um, uh, model pore m calculations of adsorption potentials in model micropores suggest that uh, the adsorption energy in the um, in, in the micropores can be a maximum of two times the adsorption energy on the plane surface. So. Um, you could argue that a reasonable test for the uh, meaningfulness of a, of a distribution function is that the range of Q should, uh, should be no more than a factor of two. So to that extent, uh, a range from four to 16 is uh, unreasonable. Uh, an additional constraint is that the lower bound of the range should be similar to the adsorption energy on something like graphitized carbon black. Uh, but that's an aspect of this work which I didn't want to address this morning. But it, it, I, I mean, the, the objective of our work is to explore, I mean, the methodology of dealing with a generalized adsorption isotherm is very well developed, as I indicated. What needs to be